Well, now it's time for you to actually have the opportunity to engage yourself in the new venture research project. I use the word venture to relate to any type of entrepreneurial behavior. So your idea may be something that relates to a social enterprise. It may be something that relates to starting an entirely new business. I don't mind. As long as you're doing something new in a space where other people are either struggling or have left a gap open for you. As long as you're not just simply copying something that already exists, okay? Now, I've deliberately set the start of this semester up for you so that you can sort of almost fall into a hole. I want you to fall into that hole deliberately. I've got you to come along, go through that process of working, trying to identify something that you're passionate about, and then from that, present to the rest of the class this idea that you have, this opportunity that you see to take action, all right? So I've created that space for you to be able to work in. Now the challenge is, to what extent are you able to now go out and quantify the extent to which that opportunity actually exists? It's very, very easy for us, very easy for us to simply say, I've got an idea I'm going to go and write a business plan. I would never let you do that. And the reason for that is that 99.9% .9 of all business plans that have ever been written in the history of the world go up in smoke the first time they meet the customer they're supposed to be related to. There is no perfect way of approaching this challenge. We live in a complex world what I would like you and your group members to do is to methodically work your way through trying to make sense of what assumptions you've made which may well prove to be correct but most likely will be incorrect and how can you actually address those imperfections pivot your idea in different directions so that you can still end up maybe in the same place or change your idea along the way if necessary but how can you go through the semester and discover what really is possible by talking to that end user, be it a customer, sponsor, whoever it may be, whoever you think is the end user for your idea, you need to be out there talking with those people face to face, okay? So the first thing that I need you to do, uh, and you can see from the diagram that I have here, the first thing that I need you to do is I need you to develop what we call a CPS hypothesis. That is the customer, the problem, and the solution. Okay? Now, you've got a problem that you've brought to the table. You talked about it in your presentation, and therefore you've made some assumptions that this problem exists, that it's big enough that it should up, actually take up your time. All right? So, first of all, does the problem exist, all right? So we actually need to get out there and talk to some potential customers and ask them that question. Is this really a problem, okay? Secondly, do you think that the product that you're uh, bringing into this play actually relates to a specific customer, right? So does that customer even exist? Are they only one out of every thousand people in in, uh, in Queensland that this, this relates to? Or is it maybe it's more broader? Maybe it's more of a, a global thing that you're relating to? If there's only one customer, that may not be very useful. But if there's lots of customers, that could be really, really cool. And what about the solution that you're proposing? To what extent do you think that you actually can use technologies in a particular way that you can actually get access to the resources that you require, okay? So I want you to be able to go backwards now and use that interaction, environmental interaction framework and think about those additional questions that you need to be asking yourself along the way. But I now want you to sort of pull the whole thing apart. I want you to try and make sense of it. I want you to be able to try and say, okay, okay, you know what? These really are the challenges that we've got sitting in front of us. So it's customer, 
do this does this customer exist this end user the problem does the problem actually exist and the solution if there was a problem and you knew who the end users were could you really actually bring into play a solution that would solve this problem so rather than assuming it all exists we need to go out we need to start talking to people now the reason we do that is because we actually want to work out well if those customers end users exist really what is their problem what is the the challenge that we we need to be working on? so we want to actually build the customer you can see on the very far side here we're talking about this notion of customer development and then we're also talking about problem development all right so we actually want to build these two things at the same time rather than assuming they exist we want to be able to build these things as they go through all right I remember listening once to, to um, Bob Ansett very famous Australian entrepreneur and he said something very simple something very profound if you have a customer you have a business if you don't have a customer you don't have a business the very essence of this thinking is making sure that the customer does exist and there's enough of those customers to make it worth your while to get into this space and actually get in there and work through that process. Having done that, having put together your CPS hypothesis, where you've very clearly and elegantly stated, this is the problem, these are the people who experience it, and this is the solution that we could actually bring to bear to solve it, I now need you to conceptualise your thinking into what we would call the business ecosystem diagram. All right? Now, all we're really trying to do in this diagram is you think there's going to be some value, let's call it money, but it could be value in some other intrinsic sense, that's going to be exchanged. You think there's a product, could be a service, product, physical product, you think that's going to be exchanged somewhere on the line. And you think there's going to be some sort of information related to this whole process that's going to be exchanged and, and transferred along the way. Draw it out for me. Draw that process so that it's very, very clear for anyone to see who are all the actors, who are all the players that are actually required to make this thing happen. Okay? Who has to be in the picture for us to be able to understand this idea? Because once you've done that, then we can start to step back from it and say, okay, well, for this guy here, what are the assumptions that are being made? And for this one here, what are the assumptions that are being made there? And so we want to make for every entity that's represented in that diagram, we want a list of all the assumptions that are being developed. These are the things that you're going to go out and talk to your customers with. These are the things that you're going to go out and find from those other stakeholders that are associated with this process. All right? If you think you can put something on a shelf and that's part of the solution, well, if the people who control those shelves don't want you on there, you need to know that. You need to know that before you start writing it out that you're going to do such a thing. You need to know that in advance. Okay. So um, in addition to the assumptions, you also, as a group, need to have identified what the risks are. All right, so you're making some assumptions, that's good that you're gonna go and test those, but what about risks? What are the risks associated for them, for you, for, every, for the customer, for everyone? What risks are actually associated with your thinking in and around this place, okay? Now having done that, we can then introduce this notion of the risk table. Now, the risk table enables us to take everything that we've done for those first two, two steps from the, uh, the, the CPS um, hypothesis into the business ecosystem diagram, and now we can talk about this risk table because now we want to sort of start to say, you know what, we've identified these risks. They're a market risk. They're a, a different type of risk. Um, we think... Uh, we can put them at this level. There are different priorities, and now we can identify who would we need to test. How would we do the test? It, to what extent are we dependent upon anything else to be able to make this process of analysis actually occur? And I want you to do it. I just don't want you to propose the table. 
I want you to physically go off into the best of your abilities, go off and have a crack at doing this research, okay? Get out there and talk to people, all right? Lastly, I need you to step back from it all once it's done, towards the end of the semester. I want you to be ask yourself, what have we found out? What's being confirmed? What's being disconfirmed? What could we get around by pivoting in one direction or another? What actually wiped us out? What actually was, that's that, that particular direction, no, nothing happening there, we're gonna to have to go back in a different direction. What has it meant for the business model diagram that you presented in your initial presentation in week four? What has it meant for that? How have you modified that as a result of going through this process? All right, so no shortcuts. You're allowed to fail. You're allowed to find out that your idea was an absolute stinker. Just as you are allowed to find out that your idea's got great merit. The main thing is, I want to be able to see the validity of your thinking. So not the optimism, the validity. I want to be able to see that what you believe to be the case was proven to be or not, and what you've done in response to the information that you've received. I wish you the best of luck. You can present this report in any way you want. For argument's sake, uh, sometimes people look at the uh, ecosystem diagram and they think, oh, how are we gonna do that? You just get a crayon. Just draw it with a crayon, use your phone, take a picture, and send me that, all right? Or include that, seriously. I just wanna be able to see what you have done and your understanding. I don't need to know that you're graphic design artists, okay? If you wanna come and present this to me face to face, it's great. If you wanna put it on YouTube, that's great. If you wanna put it in a written report, that's great. I don't actually mind how you do it, as long as you do it, okay? And as long as it's very easy for me to understand what it is you've done and what your judgments are coming out the other side. Okay, my last piece of advice to you is don't look at the exercise as a means of trying to justify your original thinking at the start of the semester. I've designed the unit in a specific way so that the average group would have tripped themselves up in terms of the assumptions they've made at the start of the semester. Okay, I factored that in, all right? Because I want to give you guys something rich to work with as you move forward. I don't want you to present the perfect idea at the beginning, all right? So don't worry about where it goes, just go where it goes, all right? Good luck, and as always, any problems, just give me a ring, send me an email, come in and see me, happy to help you along the way. Cheerio.